So the question is, what does your account look like right now? Because that's going to decipher whether you're going to pull on 1.1 or not. Villa Zone Zero has only been out for 34 days. It's been 34 days since July 4th. The game hasn't been out for nearly that long. So the general consensus right now is, should you just focus on what you already have and build out your actual roster? or pull more characters to help out your current roster. Now, I'm not gonna lie, resources, they do run thin, okay? Like, I mean, look at the last core for a character. 200,000 Denny's, 30 boss drops, and four weekly bosses. And you only get one a week, unless you like from that same one three times in a row. So the resources are thin, you know? And that's just, it is what it is. It's not really like an open world kind of game. So everything is very linear. Once again, I, I think it depends on where your investment is right now. Like if you maxed out your ambi, I mean, probably just keep your ambi, you know what I mean? But if, you, if you're like me, you don't have Kaleida, you don't have Lycone. I, I don't have any other stunners but ambi right now. So for me personally, pulling Ching Yi would be great because I barely put any investment into ambi. So that investment that would have gone to Ambi could go to Ching Yi. You know what I mean? So it's like you got to kind of pick and choose your route because it's just based off of what you have right now. But let's say you do have Lycom and you do have Plata. Don't look down on me. Um, <laughs> the thing is, you may be in a pickle because, you know, you kind of have a lot of stunners and it's like, should I even bother with a new one? Maybe I should just skip. And with Ching Yi's whole thing, if you've seen any of the early access videos, Ching Yi's thing is that... She doesn't stun as fast as the other stunners, but she gives a damage boost to balance out her kit. So she'll give you a big damage boost, but she'll also stun as well. It's just that her days build up is kind of slower than the others, but not by that much. But just that's what Chingy's kind of whole thing is. That's what she does for the most part is buff your damage up and stun at the same time. And I saw many people confused on why the A ranks are Billy and Corrin. The reason why is because I believe the additional ability of Ching Yi is if you're running with an attack unit, she gets her additional buff. Click on a character, you go to skills, and on this last like core here, you'll see the additional ability. These only proc if you're in certain teams with certain people, certain classes, certain characters, certain factions. And I think that's Ching Yi's thing is as long as she's with somebody who's attacked, she'll get her buff. So that's the reason why you have Billy and Corrin, two attack types, on her banner, because she would work with these two. And I do want to mention, most of the early access tests that have been done, they've been using A-rank W engines. They haven't been using the signature. So this thing's substat is impact, the passive is 30% impact for Ching Yi, and it's like a 20% damage bonus like buff for the whole party. So this thing is pretty insane. So again, if your Ambi is stacked out, probably just chill and save. If you have none of these guys, you might want to get her. But either way, even if you have Ambi stacked out or like you have one of these two, we don't know if we're going to get another stunner. We don't know when we'll have another stunner again. So, you know what I mean? Just saying, like, you never know. And even if you can't build Chingy immediately, that's okay. I mean, like, at the end of the day, we're not really building anybody to be maxed out right now because we don't have the resources for it. So just securing her would be good enough. And then you could build her as you go. And lastly, I think that Ching Yi is just very easy to play according to all the early access creators have been saying. It seems like she's just really easy to play. So like instead of Ambi and like kind of being a little clunky cause she gets hit and doesn't really have that many like iframes, that could be a thing too. Maybe you just don't want to play Ambi cause you just don't like the way she feels, you know? Could just be like a feel kind of thing, right? So. And it seems like Chingy kind of feels a lot better, according to them. I know I don't know yet myself, but definitely looks pretty awesome. Now I love Piper. Like, or, hold on, let me not say that. Now for me, Piper is so satisfying to play, and her assaults already go crazy. So I was actually gonna skip Jane Doe, but then, I mean, like, come on, man! They really just had to do that to us, like. But no, in all seriousness, for Jane Doe. I don't really have much to say about her, no pun intended, but she is an anomaly physical character. And the thing is she has her W engine, which actually the subset is like anomaly proficiency. The passive is anomaly rate buildup. And then she also has physical damage bonus and the W engine as well for the passive. So they kind of want her to be like a DPS DPS, right? But also has the anomaly procs, like the assault procs. And those assault procs hit for a lot. 
So it's kind of cool. Like she actually has a lot in her kit, but if anybody, she's probably going to be the one to skip based on your account because you probably already have DPSs. If you don't, then that's a good option. But yeah, if you have Alan or Zhuan and you have like something like Soldier 11 or something like that, maybe you could go ahead and skip Jane Doe, you know? But she'll be cool to play with like Piper and Double Anomaly and Stunner because she also has the A ranks as Ambi and Seth and Seth is a new character. He's awesome too. He's awesome. He's a defense character, but it's the way his kit's designed is like super cool. But yeah, you could have like a stunner and double anomaly with Jane and, you know, it's kind of wreck shot with that. But yeah, not much to say about Jane. I feel like if anybody is going to be the one to skip, it's probably going to be her. You can pull a little bit on her banner and try and get a copy of Seth or try and get like copies of Ambi. And as far as Seth goes, personally, I don't have that much interest in terms of like trying to get him and build him. But he is cool though. He's definitely cool. He's like a defense. He's like he, he wants defense, but it scales into attack. So like it kind of gets converted. And you can see like based off his the way he works in his kit, it's kind of oriented for him to be a damage dealer, but also defensive at the same time. But what we're realizing now is we can kind of build people how we want, and essentially we can kind of turn him into a stunner almost. So not going to be the best option with him not being an actual stunner, but it is an option. But yeah, that's the main thing. What does your account look like right now? Let me know in the comments. Do you actually have a DPS like Ellen or Zhu Yuan? Maybe Soldier 11? You know, are you trying to use Anton? I see a lot of Corrin's. I've actually seen Billy putting in work too. So, I've seen a lot of Billy's putting in work. I've seen like a bit videos on Billy about like, you're building him wrong and like, he's good. You're just bad and stuff like that. So yeah, there's definitely some options there. Only issue is that, like, if you're talking about Shiyu defense, there are certain weaknesses, like Ether weakness, Ice weakness, and you may not have those characters ready, so, or have them at all. But that's the main thing for 1.1. Do you need some damage? Maybe it's worth just waiting for Miyabi, or whoever comes next after Jane Doe. And then if you need a stunner, your girl ching has got you. So, basically that's what it comes down to, but I'll do it for me, and I'll catch you guys in the next one.